Welcome to Eco363, a course on financial economics. So what is financial economics? Financial economics is the study of financial markets and how they help individuals to engage in what we call intertemporal exchanges, that is exchanges happening over a period of time. It is a study of how well financial markets do this job. And given the answers for these two questions, what are their implications for policy? The second question that we might uh, want to ask is why study financial economics? Financial economics could be important from both individual point of view as well as from a macroeconomic point of view. For example, if you are a student of investments, then you could think of answering the question of what is an optimal investment for uh, an individual? Or if you happen to be a manager in a firm, then you want to think about uh, whether you want to finance expansion uh, by raising equity or through debt. However, we will focus more on the macroeconomic aspects of financial economics. For example, if financial markets or institutions do not perform well, then the savings of households will not be able uh, to be transformed into investment by firms. Now here investment uh, means investment in capital goods. So uh, basically goods like machines, equipment, buildings, all, all goods and services which enable you to provide or produce more goods and services are called as capital goods. So what are the implications of financial markets not functioning well or functioning well in consumers being able to allocate resources efficiently and hence the effect of that on production of capital goods? Because ultimately, if you look through this circular flow diagram, it is clear that capital goods or investment, which is addition to capital goods, uh, can happen only through savings and savings can be transformed into investments only if financial institutions or markets work well. Now why are we interested in production of capital goods? Because production of capital goods affects production of all the goods and services available in future, which also means that whatever shock to the economic environment of consumer would affect his or her savings. And if the shock is aggregate enough, then it would affect the overall availability of savings uh, for the financial institutions to be able to loan them to the firms. As economic agents, individuals face three fundamental trade-offs. And understanding these trade-offs is uh, the basis of understanding what role the financial markets and institutions play in the economy. For example, individuals allocate resources among alternative users to maximize their life satisfaction. As we all know, resources are scarce and all the resources have multiple uses. Given that we have unlimited wants, it basically implies that we will have to somehow uh, rank or prioritize our, uh, our wants and given the resources, try to do as best as we can. That's what we mean by maximizing life satisfaction or lifetime satisfaction. So what are the trade-offs that they face? The first trade-off, uh, which is a very important trade-off from the point of view of financial economics, is how much to consume today and how much to consume tomorrow. By taking a decision between consumption and savings today, an individual automatically decides how much is going to be he is going to be consuming in future as well. This is not only in uh, from the point of view of an individual, but also from the point of view of an economy. So if all of us save more today, then there will be more capital goods that could be financed by it. 
and that would affect the availability of goods and services in future and hence our consumption of those goods and services in future. So someone has to save enough to at least keep the current capital stock constant. This is because the current capital stock depreciates. Buildings are run down, machines become obsolete, they are wear down. And all these capital stock has to be maintained, has to be replenished. And we have to save enough at least to replenish that capital stock. Else, our ability to consume tomorrow is going to reduce considerably. The second trade-off that individuals face is risk and expected future return when they are saving. So think about as an individual what you call investment, which is uh, putting your money in different kinds of financial instruments like stocks, uh, bonds, mutual funds, uh, and so on. The fundamental underlying principle of all these choices is that if you want a higher return on your savings put into these different financial instruments, then you should be ready to uh, face a higher risk. The fundamental principle of finance tells us that there is nothing called as low risk and high return. A higher expected future return always is associated with a higher risk. And it kind of makes sense because people who are taking higher risk expect to be compensated for taking the higher risk. And therefore, they expect a higher future return. So if you're looking for lowering risk, then obviously you should be uh, content with lower expected future return. If you want a higher expected future return, then you should be okay with taking higher risk. The third trade-off uh, which uh, consumers face is which commodities and services to consume given the current income and prices. And this happens to be the standard topic that is studied under microeconomic theory. From financial economics point of view, we will be concentrating on consumption today versus tomorrow and risk and expected future return. While doing so, we will use tools from uh, the consumer decision-making theory given by microeconomics. So we will use our knowledge that we have got from studying microeconomic theory to understand how to think about these two trade-offs. So important for this course is a trade-off between current and future consumption and trade-offs among various claims on uncertain future income. In financial economics and uh, thinking about it from macroeconomic point of view, we will always emphasize that when you save, it is like having a claim on future production of goods and services because your savings finances capital goods production in the economy, which augments our capacity to produce goods and services in future. Such a claim is called a financial security. It could be as simple as a bank deposit, or it could be actually a stock, say in companies like Facebook or Apple, or it could be a bond issued by a government or issued by companies like Microsoft, uh, Ford, Honda, or it could be just a unit in a mutual fund. All such claims are called as financial securities. However, we have to note that future is uncertain. And if people differ in their willingness to bear uncertainty, then they can enter into mutually beneficial exchanges. And the role of financial markets is to facilitate these exchanges. So what are the exchanges that we are talking about? So let's say that I want to save and you want to borrow. So we have an opportunity of a mutually beneficial exchange. I save, which means I reduce my current consumption and you borrow, which, which means you increase your current consumption. But while by doing so, you allow me 
to increase my future consumption by the amount of interest I will earn on the uh, on the loan that I give to you. Now, this savings and loan process could be used for two different uses. So one of it is basically uh, that doesn't involve net capital formation. So uh, let's say, for example, you swipe your credit card to buy a ticket on a cruise in Hawaii. Then you are exchanging or you are engaging, excuse me, uh, in a mutually beneficial exchange between current and future consumption, but that does not involve production of goods of capital goods and therefore does not involve net capital formation. So examples are credit card loans, cash advantages, and so on. The second type of mutually beneficial exchange is between current consumption and future consumption that does involve net capital formation. So let's say that I uh, save uh, by putting my savings in, uh, in a bank account and you go to the same bank and ask for a loan to buy a house. So now my saving, along with many other people, is going to be used to finance uh, an asset or a capital good like house or, or like a home. And therefore, it involves net capital formation. So examples in general are loans for houses, cars, expansion projects by firms, and so on. The fundamental principle to understand here is that or uh, the fundamental principle underlying both of these intertemporal beneficial exchanges is that if I save, I am trading my current consumption for future consumption. And if you are borrowing, then you are trading your future consumption for current consumption. Capital markets allow both of us uh, to do these transfers across the period of time. And uh, that is an important role of financial institutions and markets. Mutually beneficial exchanges uh, also involve claims to uncertain future incomes or future outcomes in that sense. So uh, we could like the same example of saving and borrowing, but borrowing could be done in a variety of ways. For example, uh, you could issue a bond or you could raise money by issuing capital, which is a residual claim, which is an ownership claim. A debt is a contractual claim. But both of these claims have one thing in common, which is that they involve certain amount of risk because the future outcomes are uncertain. So let's stop here. Uh, I urge you to take the first quiz before going on to the next video. Thank you.